In today's video, I'm going to show you how you could make $10 million starting as a level one player in GTA Online. But before we get into the step by step process, first make sure to have a social club account connected to your character and do the two step verification process because if you do so, you'll be rewarded with $500,000. Now it does take a few days for that money to come in, so I didn't include it in this process just in case you're doing it in a shorter period of time than that. But with that being said, let's get into the video. So the first thing to do as a level one player with zero dollars is to steal a car from a random person off the street and bring it to a Los Santos Customs so that you could sell it for a few thousand dollars. That way you'll have enough money to buy a gun if you don't already have one. From there, grab another car and head over to this purple icon on the map. This is the location of G's cash. When you arrive at the location, look for a box within the white circle on your minimap. Once you find it, pick it up and it will give you around $20,000 as well as full snacks and ammo. Claiming G's cash can be done once per real life day, which is very helpful. Next, head over to this purple icon on the map. This is a stash house. Once again, it can be done once per day, and when you get there, break into the stash house, take out all the enemies inside, then find the yellow sticky note with a three number code on it, which can be used to unlock the safe. Once you've done so, take the contents from the safe and leave the area successfully. And if you do so, you'll receive $30,000. Now at this point, you should have roughly $50,000, and there are now four things you need to do before we can move on to the next part of the process. First, buy the cheapest garage available to you. Second, get the Duke of Death for free from the Warstock Cash and Carry website. Third, head over to an ammunition and pick up this special carbine. It's a very good assault rifle. Fourth, head over to this location on the map. This is Simeon's auto dealership. And inside the showroom, there's going to be a table with a snack bowl on it. Head over to it and get some snacks for free. Snacks replenish health and can be accessed through the interaction menu or by pressing L1 or the left bumper while your weapons wheel is out. Once you've done all four of those things, head over to this yellow R on the map. There you'll be able to start up the first first dose mission. This is a six part storyline where five of the missions each pay out $50,000 as a first time bonus and the finale pays out 250 k Now most of the missions are pretty straightforward and easy but there are some important tips for each that I want to share with you. For the first mission, after taking out all the enemies at Ron's place, call up your mechanic and request your Duke of Death. Because the Duke of Death is an armored vehicle, you could then drive into the other enemy hideout, pull up right next to the journey, hop into the journey, and then drive over to first pick up Dax, and then head over to the freak shop where the mission will end. And at the end of the mission, you should make anywhere between 65 to maybe 70k, including the first time bonus of getting $50,000. Completing this mission has also unlocked two very important things for you. First, you could set the freak shop as a spawn location, and you can now call up Dax and request to work, which is a fooligan job. These fooligan jobs are really easy, they take about 5 to 10 minutes to complete, and every time you complete it, you will earn $50,000. Now, they do have a 48 minute cooldown, so what I suggest doing is doing a fooligan job right after completing the first first dose mission, and then set a timer for 48 minutes so you can remember when to do the next one. And you're going to want to keep doing these throughout the entire process. So once you've done your first fulligan job, you could then do the second first dose mission. And this one is relatively straightforward. The first part when you go and get party supplies is very simple. But once you're attacked and you have to abandon those party supplies, you'll then be instructed to head over to the lost MC hideout. Once again, I'd call up your mechanic and request to Duke of Death because once you get to the Lost MC hideout, there's going to be tons of enemies there. So having the Duke of Death will be handy. Take out all the enemies, head into the building, and in there you'll have to take pictures of some plans, steal some of the good stuff if you know what I'm talking about, and then having the Duke of Death right outside of the building will make it easier to escape and head back to the freak shop. And that's going to be the end of the second first dose mission. Once again, you're making 60 to 70k roughly. Moving on to the third first dose mission, usually this one is considered to be the hardest out of all of them, but there are a few things you could do to make it way easier. First off, head over to an ammunition and pick up a homing launcher and get full ammo for it. It will cost a lot of money, but is definitely worth it. Then once you start up the mission and head over to Stab City, use your Duke of Death and drive up the hill here all the way up to the very top and once you get up there, you can then stand on top of the Duke of Death or right next to it, take out your homing launcher, 
and all you have to do for this section is to destroy property down in Stab City. So once you get your homing launcher out, any target that it locks onto, fire a rocket at it, and with some time, you should have all of the property destroyed, and it will then direct you to the other hideout further up on the map. At the second location, there's going to be enemies everywhere once again, so stay in your Duke of Death, and what you're now going to have to do is find 10 packages of the good stuff once again. So, there's different locations that they're at. The first two are right here. There's going to be enemies around it, so make sure you take them out first. But pick up those packages and then drive the Duke of Death over to this part of the barn here. Head inside. There's going to be another package there. And then once again, hop back into the Duke of Death and drive around the side of the building so that you're up next to the entrance of the basement part of that building. Once you get there, get inside. It's just like a stash house. Take out the enemies and there's going to be two more packages there. Once you have them, get back in the Duke of Death and then drive into the central area here of the hideout. There's going to be two more packages on the right on the shelving units there. And then drive over to the other side of the central portion of the hideout because inside a little life raft there, there's going to be another package. And once you've got that one, then you could drive down to the docks and at the docks, the final two packages will be there. Once you've picked them up, you could then hop into the dodo and fly back and land in the canal. It's a bit of a complicated mission, so take your time, but all of those tips should really help using the Duke of Death and make sure you use your homing launcher for Stab City. And of course, once again, you're going to get the $50,000 first time bonus and then any money for the mission, so another 60 to 70k. From there, we're going to move on to the fourth first dose mission, and luckily for you, it is very easy. It's essentially a stunt race very straightforward there's literally no tips for it just go through it enjoy yourself we're now going to move on to the fifth first dose mission first before you do the mission buy some throwables which you could do through your interaction menu grenades and sticky bombs are the best option once you get to the hippie camp take out all the equipment with sticky bombs and then once you get the location of the other vans you could then go up to them once again use sticky bombs if you want or even the homing launcher to take them all out and once you've done that, you'll then be directed to another hideout higher up in the mountains. When you get there, do not go into the hideout. Once again, like Stab City, drive up the side of the hill next to it. Take out your homing launcher and shoot the three hippie vans from this vantage point there. Then you could use your Duke of Death to drive into the hideout. A Valkyrie will appear. Once again, use the homing launcher, take it out easily, and then drive away. And that's the end of the fifth first dose mission. And of course, I'll be another 60 to 70k. And now all that's left for the first dose storyline is the finale. Now, I do suggest getting snacks, re-up your snacks, re-up your ammo, everything for this one, because it's going to be a bit of a shootout. So the beginning of the mission is going to have you go to the humane laboratory. I would just go in guns blazing. You could do it stealth, but I wouldn't bother. Get inside, take out all the guards inside and open up all the crates. Once you've done so and collected the chemicals, you'll then be directed to go divert a train. This part can seem a little bit tricky or a bit of a rush, but all you have to do is drive down to the train tracks next to the highway and then follow the train tracks. They will take you right to the train station. From there, you could divert the train and to finish off the mission, you could head over to the crash site of the train and open up all the crates to get all of the chemicals. Now, there will be tons of enemies around you, so take your time, use your snacks, and once again, for all of the helicopters coming at you, you could use the homing launcher to take them out. Once you've got all the chemicals and have taken the brocade 6x6 to the freak shop, the mission will be done. You'll get your $250,000 first time bonus reward, and in total, you should have made over $600,000 from all of the first dose missions. Now that whole process should have taken anywhere between maybe two to three hours. So in that time, you should have done at least one more Fooligan mission, which is another $50,000. And now it is time to get into the treasure hunts. Now I actually did these right before the first dose finale, but you could do them at any time. There are three treasure hunts in total, but for right now, we're gonna focus on the first two. And the first one we're gonna do is the Navy Revolver Treasure Hunt. So the first thing to do is to head over to this location here on the map, on the side of the wall of the building, there's going to be Can You Find Me written on it. Investigate it, that is the first clue, and you're gonna get $5,000 for each clue we investigate. The second clue is over here, next to the airstrip in Sandy Shores. 
And once again, once you've investigated the clue, you'll get $5,000. The third clue to investigate is going to be here on the map. It is a machete stuck into a barn. And the fourth clue is going to be here on the map. There's going to be a bloody handprint on an outhouse here behind the restaurant. Those are the first four clues. Now, the fifth clue is actually randomized. It could be in multiple different locations. I will leave a link to a video that shows all of them to you in the description down below. But once you get to the correct location, there's going to be a black minivan with blood and stuff in the back. Investigate it once again. And once you've done so, you'll then get a text message from the slasher. Once you've got the text message, then head over to the Sandy Shores airfield between 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. in game. And after waiting there for a minute or two, the Sandy Shore Slasher will appear, take him out, and when you do, you'll be rewarded with $50,000 and the Navy Revolver. Now, if you have your social club connected to your character, you could then go out and get 50 kills with the Navy Revolver, and once you do, you'll be rewarded with an additional $200,000, meaning the treasure hunt in total will make you 275k. So that is the first treasure hunt. The second one to do is the dual action revolver treasure hunt. By this time, you should have received an email. If you go into it, it will show you a picture of a location that you have to go to. That location will be highlighted by a yellow circle somewhere on the map. When you head over there, you're going to have to find a note stuck to something in that area. Once again, I'll leave a link to a video in the description down below that shows you all of the locations of the notes. But once you've checked out the note, there's then going to be three circles on the map that show you three different locations of clues that you have to find. For this clue here on the map, head over to this tree next to the road and next to it's going to be an empty gun box. That is clue number one. The second clue is going to be here on the map next to the Alamo Sea. There's going to be a broken down shack right on the beach there. Head into it and there's going to be a bloodied shovel. That is the second clue. And then the third clue is over here up on the side of the mountain. Run up to this location here and there's going to be a little cave. Inside the cave is going to be clue number three. And once you've inspected all three clues, you'll then be given a location to a treasure chest on the map. Head over to it and add it. You'll be able to claim the dual action revolver. Once again, like the Navy Revolver, if you get 50 headshots, you will be rewarded with $250,000. Now, finding enough NPCs for these challenges can be tough, so I personally go down to Vespucci Beach, and there on the boardwalk or on the paths around it, there's going to be tons of people. That's the best place to go. And now that you completed that treasure hunt, you should be well past the $1 million mark. And we're now going to start up the second half of the first dose mission storyline, which is the last dose mission storyline. There are five missions in total, and this time, instead of paying out $50,000 for a first time bonus, you actually get $100,000 for a first time bonus. The first last dose mission is very straightforward. You're going to be at the freak shop, and there's going to be enemies everywhere coming at you from all directions. Make sure you're snacked up, and all you have to do is stay in the freak shop and take them out. You could use the homing launcher for the helicopters that come in, but the special carbine should be good enough to take out every enemy there. The second last dose mission is once again fairly easy. You're first going to have to go around and interrogate a bunch of gang leaders. They'll eventually give you a location to a warehouse down at Elysian Island. When you get there, you're going to have to go inside and find a few different things that you have to take pictures of and also steal. The first is going to be some information at the top of this red workbench here. The second is more information on a bulletin board on the other side of the warehouse. The third thing is going to be the munitions that are on the floor in the boxes. The fourth is another box with a logo on it. And then the fifth one is some more information on this other workbench here. At some point while you're in the warehouse, some guards will come in. All you have to do is sneak up behind them, take them out with a crowbar or a baseball bat. That will allow you to stay stealthy. But once you've taken them out, you can then grab the key card off of the workbench and drive away. That's going to be the end of the mission. And of course, once again, we're getting $100,000 as a first time bonus for all of these missions, plus some extra. So you're making roughly 110 to 120 for each. The third last dose mission is going to have you go over to the opposing organization's hideout. Once you get inside, you could do things stealth, but just go in, take out everybody, get to the top floor. And at the top floor, you're going to have to find 
a clipboard that has a picture of lab rat on it pick that up and also pick the keys they're very easy to see on the different desks and tables and then head downstairs and once again you have to take out tons of enemies before you could take lab rat and bring them back to the freak shop the fourth last dose mission is probably the easiest you're heading over to freelander's house or his sanctuary i don't know sort of weird but once you get there you're gonna go once again on a big acid trip i'm pretty sure it's a timed mission so all you have to do is survive for long enough and you'll be good to go and now for the final last dose mission you're first gonna have to take a plane and then follow a larger cargo plane very closely so that you can hack it and get inside once you're inside take out all the enemies in there and you're gonna finally see that dr freelander is going to jump out and escape so from there all you have to do is land the large cargo plane at the Sandy Shores airfield, take out all of the cops as Dax is loading all of the stuff into the truck, and then drive the truck back to the freak shop. And with that, you've completed the last dose mission storyline. You should have made about 550, maybe 600K once again. And now we're getting really close to the $2.2 million mark, which is the first milestone for getting even more money in the game. And throughout this entire process, you should have done another one or two fooligan jobs. Now at this point, if you did complete the two-step verification and got the $500,000, you're pretty much done this first portion of the process. But if not, you're then going to have to go and do the stone hatchet treasure hunt. But this one is a little bit different than the other ones. You're first going to have to get a text message from Mod. If you haven't got it already, head over to the white M in the top right hand corner of the map. But once you get it, you're then going to start receiving emails from her of different bounty targets she wants you to take out. Their location will be shown by a little yellow icon on the map surrounded by a yellow circle. They're going to be somewhere in that circle. You're going to have to look around and find them. But you can either, once you get to them, take them back to mod and get $10,000 or you could just kill them and get $5,000. I do suggest taking them out because it is a lot faster to do. There are five bounty targets in total, and each time you take them out, like I said, you're gonna get $5,000. At the end of it, she's gonna give you a location to a treasure chest on the map. If you head over there and get to the treasure, you're gonna be able to claim the stone hatchet. And once again, like the other two treasure hunts, if you get 25 kills with the stone hatchet, you will get an additional 250K, meaning that all in, with this treasure hunt, you can earn another $275,000. And with that, we now have only one more thing to do before hitting the $2.2 million milestone, which I'll explain why it's a milestone here in a little bit. So when we completed the last dose missions, you should have also gotten a free car from completing them. Hopefully you claim that car, but if you didn't go over, claim it, it's very fast and it's going to be helpful for what we're going to do here in a second. But first, take it over to a Los Santos Customs and get one engine upgrade for it. Just get the level one upgrade. Once you've done that, then head over to this purple icon on the map. This is a weekly time trial. When you complete this time trial, you have to get from one point to the other in a specified time. You will earn $100,000. And this car is fast enough for almost all of these time trials. They change each week. But in my case, I got one of the harder ones. It took me some time, but in the end, I was able to complete it and get $100,000 for completing that time trial with this new car. And now that that's done, you should have $2.2 million. And this is a huge milestone, a huge point, because it allows you to buy the best money method for solo players, I would say, in the game, which is the Kasaka Submarine or the Kasaka business. Now at first it will be locked on the Warstock Cash and Carry website, so you're actually gonna have to first go over to the music locker, which is on the other side of the casino. It's denoted by the little music sign here on the map. When you get in there, head over to the green M on the map, and this is gonna start up the cutscene that'll allow you to buy the Kasaka submarine. Once you get through the cutscene, you could then purchase the submarine for 2.2 million dollars from there request the kasaka submarine from your interaction menu head over to it and there's going to be another cutscene of course but once the cutscene is over you could then start up the Cayo perico heist the first thing you're going to have to do is the gather intel mission and for your first time playing through it's going to be different than the rest of the times that you do it you're first going to have to head over to the lsia airport 
They're then going to take you to Cayo Perico, the island itself. Once you're at the island, take yourself and El Rubio, the guy you're going to be fleecing, over to a dance party. Of course, there's going to be once again another cutscene, so wait for that to end. But once it has, you're then going to be at this dance party. And you now have to sneak around the island and scope out a bunch of different things for the heist itself. There's going to be a one or two minute period where all the guards are going to stop you from getting anywhere on the island. So just wait it out. But once you've done that, one of the guards is going to move away from the gates. You can then head over to the gates. And from there, I want you to take this exact route. I will speed it up for you. Make sure you're careful when sneaking around the island because there's guards everywhere. And each guard has a huge blue cone of vision. If you enter that cone of vision and they see you, you'll then be brought back to the dance party. And if it happens enough times, you'll be kicked off the island. So be very careful. Follow this exact route. And once you get to El Rubio's compound and you've scoped it out, you'll then be directed to go to the communications tower. Once again, sneak over there. And when you get there, go all the way up until you find the gray signal box. You'll have to complete a simple mathematical puzzle. But once you have, you'll then get access to all the security cameras, scan through each of them completely, and they will point out different areas that you could enter the compound, different loot within the compound, and most importantly, the primary target which is in the basement camera. From there, you'll then be directed to go scope out different things at the north dock. But before you go there, you're gonna have to go scope out two very important things because there is a best way to complete the heist that gets you the most amount of money and allows you to do it the fastest. The first thing to scope out is the main dock. It's this part here of the island. Run over to it from the communications tower. And when you get there, take a picture of the dock itself, the water and where all the boats are. If you take that picture and send it to Pavel, it will then unlock as an infiltration point for the finale. You'll need that. Then while you're there, take one of the dinghies that are there and drive over to the base of the compound on the other side of the island. And when you drive around the waters really near the edge of the cliff, you will see that the drainage tunnel is now unlocked as a compound entry point. And that is very important once again for the finale. From there, you can then head over to the North Dock, scope out everything that you're required to scope out, and then get off the island at the airstrip. And that will be all you need to do for the Gather Intel mission. Now, when it comes to the actual setup missions and the finale itself, I will leave a link to my guide in the description down below that will take you through all of them and make it a lot easier and will guarantee that you will get the most amount of money possible. With the heist on your first time through, you're going to make at base $1.5 million because you have the Madrazo files and you should get decent secondary loot. But because it is your first time through, if you watched my video and followed my guide, you should have also completed the Elite Challenge and done the finale very efficiently. And because of that, you're going to get a bunch of first time bonuses, taking the total amount of money made from the first Kyle Preco heist from the 1.5 $1.6 million mark all the way up to 2.2 $2.3 million. And now after completing the heist, you should have made roughly four and a half million dollars so far. But unfortunately, the heist as a solo player does have a two and a half hour cooldown. So in the meantime, you're going to want to go out and now buy an agency, which costs at minimum two, just over two million dollars. The agency along with the Kasaka submarine are the two best businesses in the entire game and can make you the most amount of money. Now the agency itself has four different ways to make money. The first is by doing security contracts, which you'll have to do when you first get into your agency. They are simple missions that take five to 10 minutes to complete, and they will earn you anywhere between 30 to $60,000. And once you complete your first security contract, you'll then unlock the VIP contract which is the Dr. Dre contract. The Dr. Dre contract is like a large heist. You have three mini heists and two finale missions. And at the end of it, you get paid out $1 million. But for your first time through, because of first time bonuses, you're going to make closer to 1.4, maybe 1.5 million. Now for your first time doing it, there will be two additional setup missions you have to do before you get into the actual contract itself. You don't have to do it anytime after that. 
but they will be denoted by yellow Fs on your map. The first one will be at the Los Santos Golf Course. Once again, I'll leave my guide on how to complete the Dr. Dre contract easily linked in the description down below. It should make the entire process a lot easier. But as I said, the Dr. Dre contract is the second way to make money with the business. The third way is through payphone hits. Now they unlock once you've completed three security contracts and they are simple assassination missions. They take about five to 10 minutes to do and they pay out now $45,000 if you complete the assassination and a bonus challenge with it. They only have a 10 minute cooldown so you can mix them in multiple times while doing the Dr. Dre contract, which in total takes about an hour and a half to two hours to complete. And then the final way to make money with the agency is through the wall safe. A set amount of money will be deposited into the wall safe every in-game day or 48 minutes, depending on how many security contracts you do. For every security contract you complete, an extra $100 will be added to that total and it caps out at 20k. So those are the four ways to make money, but of course, the first thing you should do is complete three security contracts. They have a five minute cooldown, so you could pretty much do them back to back to back and then start up the Dr. Dre contract while also doing payphone hits in the meantime. Like I said, for the first time playing through, you should make about 1.3 to 1.4 million just for doing the Dr. Dre contract itself. But if you add in the payphone hits, you could make anywhere between 1.6, maybe 1.8, million dollars and so once you've done that completed your first Dre contract and did payphone hits you should now have made roughly six and a half million dollars and from here all you have to do is replay the kyle prego heist and replay the dr Dre contracts while mixing in fooligan jobs and payphone hits now the Dre contract does have a 48 minute cooldown so it actually works out perfectly because if you do the Dre contract plus payphone hits that will likely be two to two and a half hours. So by the end of it, you'll be able to do another Kyle Prico heist. And then by the end of the Kyle Prico heist, you should be able to do another Dre contract. And so all you have to do is rinse and repeat until you get to roughly $10 million, which should only take a couple more of each to do. Now, once you get to the $10 million mark, you should have roughly $6 million or so to spend on many different things in the game. If you wanna go out and buy cars and do whatever, that is completely up to you. But if you wanna make some very smart purchases, the first I would make is the Acid Lab. You could purchase it by heading over to the Freak Shop and this was unlocked for you when you completed the first dose missions. It is at base 750K, but then you're also able to buy the equipment upgrade for 250K if you've done 10 Fooligan missions. The way the business works is you purchase supplies. Over time, those supplies are then turned into product, which you could sell for a profit. If you purchase supplies for $60,000 and do that twice, after four hours, $96,000 worth of supplies will turn into $335,000 worth of product, which if you sell in a public lobby with 25 or more people will be a $500,000 sale. Meaning with the asset lab, you can make 100K per hour in essentially passive income because all you have to do for those supplies to turn into product is to be in an online session. So the Acid Lab would be a great investment. It only costs 1 million and it can make you $100,000 per hour. Another great investment I would consider doing is buying a Kasaka on your second character. You can access it by going into the pause menu, heading over to online and down to manage characters. When you get into the manage character screen, you can then switch over to your other character. And when you're there, you could then buy a Kasaka once again. And what that allows you to do is then do a Kyle Prico heist back to back. So if you do a Kyle Prico heist on your main account, you're then able to go over to your secondary character and do another Kyle Prico heist right after because the cooldown doesn't carry over across characters. And getting the Kasaka on the secondary character is really easy because the two characters share bank accounts. So it's not like you have to go and make another 2.2 million there. All you have to do is have 2.2 million in your bank on your main character and you could go buy the Kasaka on your secondary character right away. And although there are tons of great things you could buy, the last two things that I've considered buying is one, a nightclub. It's another great way to make passive money in the game. And the second thing is the Sparrow helicopter, which you could buy because you have the Kasaka submarine. It is stored in the back of the submarine, making the setup missions a lot easier to complete. But with that being said, that is how you can make $10 million starting from a level one player in GT Online. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please drop a like. If you're new, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Peace.